Welcome to paradise. All right, you ready? Got him. Oh my God! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Start taking our tuna, baby. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to Life by the Bow. And today we are going to be reviewing our top, top 10 videos of 2023. So you know we put out a lot of content, but at the end of the year, we like to sit down and kind of go over all the things you may have missed or didn't make it into the edit. So we can just kind of reflect on these videos and tell you a little bit of what was going on behind the scenes. But we wanna thank you guys so much for following us throughout this entire year. And if you're new to the channel, we wanna welcome you. And we hope that you like the content. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link all the top 10 videos down in the video description below. Okay just in case you guys did miss one of them that we're talking about and you're interested in seeing it. But yeah, these are basically the stories behind the stories. <laughs> we do this for you guys, the ones that genuinely love life by the bow. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like behind the scenes. So very cool, unbelievable year that yeah. we've had so far. And I feel like every year when we do this video, we say the same exact thing. And um, a lot of really new cool things, a lot of progression, and that's all thanks to you guys. Thank you so much. But we're gonna do um, a little bit of bonus content. We're gonna fill you guys in on some things at the end of the video. So stay tuned throughout the entire thing, but we're gonna get into it, and then we're gonna give you that bonus towards the end. So definitely make sure that you guys stay tuned <laughs> throughout the entire video. But yes. go ahead, you got the list. Yep, so we're gonna start off by going from 10 to one mm -hmm. and and one being our favorite video we've done this year yep so 10 number 10 was what every boater needs to do florida boat vacation fishing trip in marathon mm -hmm. so that trip was incredible i mean when we actually had an amazing time exploring Marathon because we don't really spend too much time there. We've never spent any time in Marathon no. exploring or doing any boating or fishing. No, so it was really nice to kind of just change gears. And a lot of people that aren't familiar with the Keys, Marathon is far enough to where it's a vacation for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, like a 40 minute, how, what would you say, 45? It could It'd be, be in an hour, an Depending hour on traffic, it can be yeah. an hour all the way up to an hour and a half, two hours. So what a lot of people don't realize about the Keys is the chain of islands are basically 100 miles long. Yeah. So, you know, when people reach out to us and they say, hey, do you know anything about Marathon, Key West, Big Pine? We're like, yeah, we know a thing or two, but it's not our hometown. Like, yeah. it's considered like a vacation. So when we went down to Marathon, it was so cool because it was a vacation. And when we showed up, the resort that we were working with, Marlin Bay, they were so excited to see us. They had a sign set up for us and everything. And they were actually longtime viewers of the channel yeah, as well. Yeah, a couple which was really of the employees. Neat. Yeah, and it was just like really nice to like interact and like, you know, of course their hospitality was just in impeccable, honestly. Yeah. We showed up, asked me what I wanted to drink, <laughs> they delivered it and it was just <laughs> great overall. And Prior to that, we went and got some stone crabs, which Ugh. was fantastic. I loved it. Fresh as they get there at the Marathon Fisheries. And like, that's our stop <clears throat> every single time we drive the boat down to Key West. Mm -hmm. So we were really happy to share that with you guys. And it was really cool seeing our first ever contender. That was awesome. Really mm -hmm. cool. And yeah, I, yeah, I forgot about that. That was a really neat experience. Mm -hmm. Like. You know, we haven't seen that boat in what, like five years? Yeah, it had been, no, longer than, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, five years. Possibly, I don't know, I'm not keeping track yeah, of time. Yeah, five years. So it's been about five years since we've seen that boat and it just still looks 
like it looks incredible. Perfect. Yeah, they've been taking good care of it. Yeah, and it's funny too because, like I said in the video, they had shipped that boat up to Ohio. So the fact that they were down a marathon, it was really cool. But and surprising, <laughs> very surprising. But Marlin Bay, like, if I could give it ten stars out of five, I'd give it ten. Yeah. I mean, the place is awesome, Stephanie. Yeah absolutely loved the house yeah. i loved it too yeah and once we got done shooting we were like man we wish we had like a whole nother week down there just to hang out and just take advantage of you know being there at the place but hopefully you guys enjoyed that one yep and then let's go on to number nine yeah secluded island town only accessible by boat this is when we headed over to north captiva mm -hmm. and it was a first for the both of us actually we had never explored you know that area and i mean we fished in the gulf before but we mm -hmm. haven't like fished around Nothing there. really near shore no no so we um and also like the fact that like this island you can only get to by boat and it's just like it gives you like that bahamas feel where you're just like only going everywhere through by golf cart there's like a few restaurants on the island and you got a, a really nice beach there that you can hang out so even if you're just going on the island to hang out it's it's a fun experience yeah. and i would have been perfectly fine just staying on the island and never even leaving by boat but of course, like if I was sitting on the island, I'd be sitting there thinking to myself, like, man, like, where are those red <laughs> snappers at offshore? So I'm glad that we did go offshore and we yeah. did go fishing. But backing up, the way that that entire thing happened, um, we used to have our 23 Pathfinder. And when I put the 23 Pathfinder up for sale, um, one of the salesmen, Chris, over at um, Fort Myers Marine, he like knew I was going to start selling the boat because we had just gotten our 24 Pathfinder. So I never even got a chance to, to put it up on the boat, market. Yeah. Yeah. And he kind of just like swooped in. He's just like, hey, man, like I'll take this off your hands right now. So it was kind of like a, a pocket listing, I guess you could say, for a boat. <laughs> yeah. So that started the relationship with Fort Myers Marine. And then Chris got to talking to Brian and then Brian got to talking to Jason. These are all the people over at Fort Myers Marine mm -hmm. and they put together this perfect little plan for us to use their boats yeah. and use Brian's place on North Captiva. And I didn't ask any questions. I was like, man, everything you guys are talking about sounds so cool. So the way that you guys see our videos unfold more than half the time is how they are like, mm -hmm. you know, we don't really know what to expect. We yeah. don't really ever have hard set plans because things change so fast. They do. And when you're constantly always on the go, yeah. you, you kind of have to adapt. And that's what we did in that video is we adapted and we figured out and found all the best places within the short period of time that we had in Captiva. And it just made such a really challenging but very cool video for you guys. Yeah, and an another thing to add on that, you know, when you're going to new areas, it's not like you have like all your spots or anything like that. And even if you do have a spot, it may not produce. Mm -hmm. So you may be catching a different species because someone has already come in and just like wiped, wiped it, it out. out. So that's just one thing that like we struggle behind the scenes with when we're exploring new areas is we're literally showing you exactly how we're finding these spots as we're filming. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was, it was awesome. It All was the success. kudos to Clay, cause I'm just there enjoying the fishing, but he's really putting in the hard work to like make sure the drift is right. Like where we're at, like, you know, what does the bottom look like in order to find these species? And we moved around a few times before we got it, but we ended up like finding the red yeah. snapper, which was nice. It was very rewarding when you're like, out there and like you know the first few uh stops where we we just weren't catching any like mm -hmm. even undersized nothing and we couldn't get away from those like red grouper and like we've caught we threw back so many and we're just like we have to like move spots but that's what we kept encountering at every spot yeah. but we are specifically after snapper that's why we threw back the trigger fish too mm -hmm. <laughs> but we made it happen and that's really what what all this is about, you know, I mean, her and I, we're recreational anglers. We yeah. like going out on the boat just as much as we like fishing. And yeah. biggest thing, and I, I've grown a lot in all of this, and I've realized it's not always about fishing. It's no. about the experience. And it that's is. the content that we're trying to bring to you guys because it's yeah. more relatable. 
and it's real. Yeah. So that's another big reason why I enjoyed that video so much. But let's go ahead and go on to number eight. All right, number eight, you haven't experienced boating until you've been here. So this is when we were in Key West mm -hmm. and we went over there and uh, did some exploring. I really like this. It, it was just like a fun experience because once you get to the lower keys, it is just like- It's like vacation, like we were talking about marathon. But it's, it's so different because mm -hmm. you have, you know, all these restaurants that are available to you. You have incredible sandbars, which you can access by boat or a charter boat. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of those places that, you know, is so close yet feels so far sometimes, you yeah. know? and. Clay and I actually spent our honeymoon there just for that very reason. We love it <laughs> so much. There's just so much to do. The fishing's incredible. And just like, just overall. Yeah, I mean, like... we really like Key West. Honestly, like if we didn't have so many roots in the Upper Keys and Miami, mm -hmm. Key West is probably mm -hmm. a place that I would love to live just because, like she had mentioned, sandbars. The best sandbars that you are going to mm -hmm. find in the Florida Keys by far. Yeah, um, and some really good restaurants over there. Fishing, phenomenal. Has some of the best fishing in all of the Keys. And in my opinion, like there is a reason why Key West, like people flock and they gravitated to the Florida Keys and Key West from the very beginning is because there's that area is so rich for so many different things. But, but that was a tricky, that was a hard day of fishing, I remember. Very, very hard we day of fishing. We kept moving around and then Clay was just like, nope, let's move. And I just like had this feeling, like sometimes you get this feeling where you're like, no, we've got to stay. Like, I feel like I'm, something's going to happen. And little, like literally like two minutes after I told him, no, 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 no. Cause he was trying to get me to pick up my line. I hooked up on a keeper grouper. Yep. And we got a grouper. That's right. And what's so funny about that day too, is we were fishing these spots that we were fishing in this video back in February. And we were catching black groupers, yeah. red groupers. Like we were catching so many different groupers. Yeah. Because they were out of season. That weren't in season. <laughs> yeah. And we were trying so hard to catch a mutton snapper, but all we were catching were groupers. And we had to throw all the groupers back because they yeah. weren't legal. So our plan was let's go back and fish here in May. Yeah. So that way we can go and catch all the freaking groupers that we threw back. We could not catch a fish whether it was a mutton a grouper so, so off the fish nothing now. like the only thing that we could catch were yellowtails and we we're like whatever man it's so calm like we just said let's go to the tortugas let's do something different you know let's film around there and just like hang out and show the water and on the way back like stephanie said she did a drop caught a black and then we're just cracking up laughing because like I was so pessimistic about it because fishing just didn't work out the entire day. And then she just starts cracking up laughing because we started catching fish when I wanted to leave. And she caught the red grouper, which was more than enough. Yeah. Took it back to the restaurants there on the pier in Key West and just had such an awesome time. And I think something that I really enjoyed about that trip and that video more than anything is there was so much chaos going on at the beginning of the year between getting both of our new boats. We did a whole shoot with GMC, which we'll talk about later. And there was just so much going on and I was yeah. working my butt off. So was Stephanie and we just told ourselves, let's just relax for like three or four days after the shoot, put down the cameras and just enjoy it for ourselves. And that's exactly what we did. And it was just an amazing trip. It was, it was something that we extended the trip because we were like, we needed it for ourselves to just kind of enjoy Key West mm -hmm. and just have a little bit of, of fun throughout the chaos. And it was great. Yeah. It was, it was just an overall experience was amazing. And then you, you want to move on to number, number seven. Yeah. Unless you had something you wanted to say. No, I think that's Good. it. Number yeah. seven. All right. So number seven, the story every fisherman wants to tell. So you go ahead with this one. So <laughs> <laughs> when you shoot content and you make these videos, there's definitely a lot of highs and lows. Yeah. And <clears throat> if you ever want to be a content creator in the fishing industry, this is probably some very valuable information. Um, there's seasonality to it, you know? Um, 
January, February, March, you start to get on like this incline um, where the channel starts to do very well. You get a lot more views um, just because people are getting excited about fishing and getting back out onto the water. Yeah. And then everything, like the views just increase, the channel, everybody's watching the videos. And then around July, everything peaks. And then August, September, the channel just flatlines. So that's the time of year that I just, I really despise because it's kind of like a weird time of year because like you want to go out there, you want to film content, but you know if you film it, no one's potentially going to watch it. So we went out and we shot that in September and it was a tough day because we didn't have our normal videographer and we were training someone else at the same exact time. So that was tough. And we went out there and we went sword fishing and it just wasn't happening the entire day. I mean, we put in our time and no. you know, we, we tried all different types of fishing and knowing that the fishing was really good, we were having a really tough day and things do get hard sometimes filming content. And just when mm. you didn't think anything that anything was gonna happen, when you're about to pack it up. Yeah. Whole school of mahi just comes around the boat. <laughs> and it's just like. It's like a light switch it, like that. Crazy. And it's on. And the thing is, if you're not paying attention, you could easily miss it. Mm -hmm. Because they just come on by and as quick as they come by, they leave. They're gone. So you have to act really fast. And I just remember just being, oh my goodness. Because we have to switch gears. Like, you know, we have to get new rods, start pitching out baits to them, hook them up, keep one in the rod like on the rod so they the school kind of stays by mm -hmm. and we're just you know picking them up and then clay hooks up on this bull and i just well at first i just remember we saw like, the bull first like we, we saw did. the bull swimming around within the school and we're casting to him but of course like you know the smaller ones and when i say mm -hmm. smaller ones these weren't small fish they're like, pretty they were, big schoolies yeah they're like five pound schoolies and like that's yeah. a big schoolie nowadays yeah. so like i'm not trying like it's not that I was upset that we were catching the schoolies, but you could just see this bull just yeah. racing around all lit up. On the up. surface, when they go and they yeah. charge like after bait, you just see them on the surface on a calm day. And it's just so interesting to yeah. watch them go after But it. it's funny too, because we had one of them hooked up. And yeah. while we had one of the schoolies hooked up, the uh, bull was racing right behind the schoolie, trying to eat the bait out of the schoolie's mouth. It's just pretty insane. We got all that on camera. Yeah. And we racked a couple in the boat real quick. Well, let, let's just let's just rewind. Mm -hmm. We are working individually at this point because we are both just trying to catch a fish. Yeah. So I'm gaffing my own fish <laughs> <laughs> and and like hooking them and putting it in. And I'm like, I need to stop what I'm doing once I notice that Clay was hooked up on the bull. I'm like, I just want to make sure we get this guy. Yeah. So you were, I think, did you? Well, it's funny because we had four fish hooked up in the rod holders yeah. in the back of the boat after we'd flipped the couple in. We just said, forget about all the other fish that are hooked up in the rod holder. Yeah. Let's just focus on the bull. All four of the fish that were in the they rod holder, away. all four of them broke off. And yeah. then so we just had the bull. And we fought him for probably about a good 20, 30 minutes. I don't think it was that long. It, it felt was like that long. for you. No, it was pretty long. I don't Seriously. think it was 20 minutes. Because we had him boat side a couple different times. Oh, that's true. And mind you, Stephanie and I, we haven't caught a bull dolphin like this since like we first started dating. So it was a big deal. And especially yeah. since we had the cameras on the boat, it's like, man, things like this never happen. <laughs> so a couple times we got him near the boat. We weren't able to get a gaff shot on him. And finally, we got him near the boat. Stephanie put a gaff shot in him real quick. She lifts it over the boat like a champ. And like, those are just the moments that are just so exciting. Emotions are so heightened. And it's just such a fun and unbelievable feeling, especially doing that with your wife. And I'm like, I've been out here sword fishing all day. I just want to catch a swordfish. Like imagine how cool it would be if we caught a big, bull mahi and it just and a swordfish and she wanted to go home i was like yeah. let's just make one more drop made one more drop 15 minutes later we're hooked up we're hooked up on a swordfish i don't even think it was 15 minutes it like, was a very short it was a time. very short period of time that i was like you've got to be kidding me like yeah. it's just happening and you know it, we picked it up and it happened to be you know legal because that's mm -hmm. something we've lost fish because we're just constantly yeah we lost two other fish before yeah. that school of mahi came through so that's another reason why emotions were kind of low 
Yeah. And um, got the swordfish boat side, stuck a gaff in them, put both fish in the box and storm came through. So it made for some really cool footage. Luckily we're, we're in a pretty big boat, so we don't have to worry about weather as much. No. But yeah, I mean, just at that point of time when you kind of just come off this high from summer, those are the days that really hit hard when it comes to making content. Like days like that don't happen often. So no. when they do happen, it's just such a cool and memorable experience. It really is. But let's move on to number six. Number six. Number six. Boating from Florida to desolate islands off Cuba. That was cool. That was a really cool video, only because it was our first time in 2023 heading over to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. We got to explore like different, uh, a different place in the Bahamas, I would say. And it was just a long run. Um, a place that most people will probably never even visit. No, but case out, right? A lot of people won't. However, you know, cause it's, it's just like such a, like a long track to go. Cause you got to check into Bimini and it's like such a far run from Bimini over to case South. Cause you have to check in legally to the Bahamas before you can even fish there. Mm -hmm. So we went over there, we made, we had such a great time, like just like catching fish throughout the day. And then of course we have the chefs come in and just cook it give me the conch salad in the morning. I had that for lunch, it was so good. Mm -hmm. And then you get over to, you know, this island and we're fishing. I was exhausted. That was like, that was, we were up at like four in the morning and then we didn't get done like, I think that night until like, like 12, yeah. one o'clock. So we slept like three hours. That is why you saw me sleeping in the front of the boat. <laughs> I was tired, <laughs> but it was, it was an incredible experience and journey for sure. It was, I think that's the perfect word. It was a journey, mm -hmm. just like going that far of distance away from everything. And not to mention you're so close to Cuba once you get over to Quesal. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, a journey is definitely the way to describe it because you know, there, there's so many different things that have to be perfectly set in place in order to do a trip like that. Um, you know, there's not really n much known about k -South. There's some information that's leaked out on the internet, of course, as years go by. But if you search on the internet for a show that has been shot in k -South, I want to say that we are one of the only people that have ever shot a show in k -South legally. Yeah. And I don't, mean, I don't mean to say that to knock on anyone, but typically a lot of people fish k -South illegally. And it's very easy to fish case out illegally because it's only 70 miles from our house here in the Keys, but it's 150 miles from Bimini. And Bimini is the first port of call, like Stephanie had mentioned, mm -hmm. um, in order to check into Bahamian Customs. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. You gotta make sure you have enough fuel because you're definitely gonna burn a lot of fuel getting there. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure your boat's up to par because if the boat's not up to par, that's a long way away from home and it's very yeah. close to Cuba and it's definitely not somewhere where you want to be stranded. No. Um, so all those factors kind of go through your head. And, and at the same time, like a week prior to filming, like there were a few immigrants. Oh, so many Cuban immigrants. Yeah, that were coming South. through. Well, Haitian immigrants too. Haitian, they're, Cuban, Cubans, everyone. they're all coming in. So, you know, we just like, you want to make sure you come with supplies and yeah. everything and and it's, it's like just, meanwhile you're over there to have fun yeah. and enjoy the bahamas and go fishing there's people that are traveling across the gulf stream just trying to make it to the united states like putting their lives on the line so you know if you gave some of these people an opportunity not saying that that's what they're going to do but i would not doubt it um if somebody was desperate enough they would potentially try to do some harm to us in order to save their own lives, you know, when you're in total desperation. So there's kind of like a freaky nature to doing that trip, but. Yeah, you definitely, there's people that camp out there and like, you know, yeah. you gotta do it with a lot of boats if you're gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta go Just, with the squad for yeah. sure. But the fishing, absolutely phenomenal and it's funny because I actually just came back from there and we shot another video there this year, but I'm not going to say too much, but um, it's difficult because you're trying to experience the beauty of the Bahama, 
Bahamas, but you're trying to figure out the fishing all at the same exact time and you have one day to do it. Yeah. And you're trying to do as much as possible. So, um, you know, there, there's definitely this feeling of wanting to come back every single time you leave. So we've done another trip so far this year and I plan on continuing to go back there until I feel satisfied. And as of right now, I'm still not <laughs> satisfied. So we'll look forward to more KSAL videos in the future, but- We gotta take a break. Yeah, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a break and we're gonna eat some lunch with Factor, one of our sponsors. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna show you guys here real quick what they have to offer. So if you notice, Stephanie's going for the fridge, not the freezer because Factor is fresh, never frozen meals. Yep, and not to mention your fitness, it starts with food. And Factor. And fitness inside my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> What's pretty cool too mm -hmm. is Factor is really simple. All Stephanie has to do there is just take off the packaging, pop a couple holes in it with the fork like she's doing now and put it in the microwave for two minutes. And it's, it's as simple as that, we're eating. And for somebody that's on the go like us, our schedule filled up very quickly today. Mm -hmm. So luckily, Factor was a sponsor for today. You can go to factor75.com or you can just click the link down in the video description. And the key is to use promo code life by the about 50, because that's gonna get you guys 50% off your first box. Mmm. This is really good. So now, jumping into number five. Camping Florida's most isolated and forgotten coast on Stephanie, a 40 foot. Stephanie well, loved this one. I will tell you, I <laughs> do, I did really enjoy this camping, this camping uh, video that we did. Cause we're staying on the boat. You know, we were able to paddle over to you know, the island, hang out on the beach mm -hmm. and just, you know, just enjoy ourselves. And Clay caught a snook. Overall, it was a great experience. Yeah, and on the way over, it was glass calm. We went across the bay. Yeah. Most beautiful seagrass, which we don't really see a lot of anymore. Mm -hmm. But we were at night, we were out running all the mosquitoes. We were kept moving oh, place to yeah. place. That was something that I don't even think it, it didn't made make it, it in, in the, the video. video. We tried like five different places to park the boat. And like I originally wanted to go up in Shark River and just stay up in there, but the mosquitoes were so bad. And then like, it was funny as we pulled in, there was like all these boats at the mouth. And once we got, once we started getting torn up by mosquitoes, as we're, we're going like, in, we're just like, we know why they're yeah, at the like mouth. now we know why everybody's <laughs> at the mouth and they're trying to get a breeze to get away from the bugs. So. We and did that. We, yeah, and we found a good spot and mm -hmm. where they were bearable, but that's a lot. You gotta make sure you bring some <laughs> mosquito repellent yeah. while you're there. But uh, I love the camping aspect of it. Yeah. Stephanie, not so much. No, I do, I do like it, but it's there's definitely some like just like you're out on your boat. It's just like a little, you know, it's anything can happen i mean at night when you're sleeping i'm like terrified the anchor is gonna pull like there's just that is true like i'm i don't that get a good night's that's rest very true yeah like thinking like you know there's so many things that could happen so like i love camping because i love the experience of waking up it's like the best the best part of that entire camp is waking up the next morning mm -hmm. and everything went well and you know, we, there's we're a there. sigh of relief. There's a sigh. Yes. And also like just, you know, being immersed in nature as soon as you wake up and you just hear the birds chirping and like you just it's beautiful and you mm -hmm. see the sunrise like that is my favorite part of camping. Yeah. And I think that like there's something here that I'm about to say that we can all kind of relate to, you know, when you're in the comfort of your home and yeah. your bed. You know, you know immediately once you wake up first thing in the morning, like you can, gra you can grab a cup of coffee, get on your phone, or you yeah. can go on your TV. And when you have to work for, you know, those luxuries like making coffee and you know you can't get on your phone or watch TV, like your mind is in a state that is automatically outside of your boxed in state. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is we're so connected, we're too connected in my opinion, in this world. So by going out there camping and being completely disconnected, 
your mind enters a state of mind that some people will never even know, especially kids nowadays. Because yeah. we're getting to the point where we have service and Starlink and all these things, um, satellite phones, which we never had before. And pretty soon it's going to become a norm. So camping. You just turn it off though. Huh? You, you could, could, but kids will never. Like yeah. it's getting to a point where some parents won't tell their kids, hey kids, turn off your phones or turn off your TVs, whatever it may be. So that's what I really enjoy. It's about just getting out there leaving everyday life, enjoying unobstructed um, quality time with my wife and just enjoying everything that, Aww. you know, nature has to offer. And a big reason why we did that trip too is because I had really high hopes of going out Kobe fishing the next day. Mm -hmm. And I was being a good husband and I said to myself, well, Stephanie came out here and she did this trip with me. So <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm gonna let her sleep in a little bit. So I let her sleep in, I let the sun come up, and where we were going, I knew that it was probably best early, but I knew it was holding fish because I got some reports that mm -hmm. some fish were there. And once we got there, there was like five other boats that were fishing there. And I was like, oh no. And I see this boat and they're just Gaff and Kobe in the boat, one after another. And I was like, well, this is going to be either really good or really bad. Yeah. So by the time we got there, we only caught one Kobe because those five boats had been fishing there an hour before we did. Yeah. And we never really got a chance to get in on, on good action. Yeah. But, and he was undersized, so we threw him back. So yeah. we just kept trying to fish that area, and we didn't really... We didn't catch anything. We caught like some small groupers, like jacks, things of that yeah. nature, but nothing really in our taste spectacular. But but you did hook up. I think you hooked up on a Goliath grouper. There was Goliath groupers <clears throat> chasing the jacks and trying to eat them as we were pulling them into the boat. Just another perfect example, you know, would a nice fat Kobe have been nice? For sure. But it's really about the experience. Yeah. And it's so funny because the videos where we offer the experience, we've noticed perform so much better than like a hardcore fishing video. Yeah. So well, we, yeah. we've we realized that. You guys have helped us to realize that. Like, it's not always about catching the biggest and baddest fish. Like the content that you guys crave is the experience. So yeah. thank you to you guys for helping <laughs> us realize that. Yeah. So. I think I'm ready for number four, are you? Let's do it. All right, so number four, Stuck in Paradise, Big Boat Bottoms Out, mm -hmm. is when we went over to the West End in the Bahamas. And it's funny about the whole Big Boat Bottoming Out part, a lot of people, I read the comments and people were actually saying that that whole thing was staged, which I thought was kind of funny because it wasn't. No, tides change and yeah. things happen, especially when you're in a new area you know, you may not have the right tides. You may think like, you know, it's similar to where you're back at home, but you have to change your location. Mm -hmm. And I was very skeptical about posting that and putting all that together because getting stuck is definitely not something that anybody is ever proud of. But I don't know, something we just- didn't We didn't get stuck though, because we, we, we got, got stuck, out. But we were able to get out and push off. Yeah, I mean, we weren't high and dry. But we were, we were going to get there if we didn't make moves. But basically, the reason why I put all that in there is I just wanted to use this as an example to show people yeah, like, hey, this is the responsible way of doing things. Like, yeah. I knew we were going to get stuck if we idled out of there. Yeah. But I also knew that if we got the boat up on plane, we'd be able to get out of there. And I don't ever suggest anybody doing what we did in this video. But we also went and checked the water prior to We it. did. We went and walked through it and saw how deep it was and everything mm -hmm. before we even like decided to make that move. That's that's but, that's why we did it. Like I would not suggest just going without checking the area first. Yes. Yeah. But the thing is too is like a lot of people they rely on their GPSs very heavily. Yeah. And that's where you get into trouble is yeah. when you're relying on your GPS. No, we were knee deep in the water somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but if you notice, I was looking over the con console constantly because I was navigating visually versus the GPS. And like she said, we checked the area, we yeah. knew where the depth was, but it's very, it's still very easy to mess up. Yeah. And I knew I couldn't mess up 
And the reason why I knew that is because the boat had 400 gallons of fuel in it. Mm -hmm. It had almost 200 gallons of live well water inside of the live well. It had ice, it had everything that we needed for a whole week in the Bahamas. And I knew if we messed up, that boat was not going to move. It was so heavy. So mm -hmm. after we checked, we backed the boat up, we punched it. I was actually really nervous. Stephanie was really nervous yeah, too. Yeah, you could see it in my face. Yeah, was it, was like, it was pretty funny, like her was... screaming in the background and everything. Yeah. But, you know, I knew at the end of the day, I'd been driving boats for a really long time, and as long as I just didn't mess up, <laughs> we'd be okay. And Luckily, we, he didn't mess up. Yeah. So that could have gone really bad. Maybe as I get older, I'll get a little more uh, careful, I guess, so to speak. <laughs> But I, I knew that we got it and we got out of there just fine and uh, got out into the channel. We found birds very quick. We yellowfin tuna fish from our way to Bimini to West End. And we were and, successful with that. Yeah, and like we caught two massive yellowfin tunas. And fed everyone mm -hmm. once we got there, which is great. And we got to hang out with George. Yeah. And the team and everyone yeah, there and it was it was a fun experience it was but once we caught those two tunas we're like well what more do we want we yeah. got a whole weekend in the bahamas like I we're know. gonna catch all different types of fish like two tunas is fine so showed up to the dock and like she said george poveromo was there yeah his whole team you know their videographers we had a great time with them over there in the west end staying at blue marlin cove and, and man, the dinner was excellent, especially mm -hmm. when Joe we, cooked for us. Yeah, Joe cooked for us. We had like seared tuna. We had tuna in every single way possible. Like we had tuna steaks. Like it was delicious. Yeah, and Joe is the owner of Blue Marlin Co. Yeah, and it was just like I love when you know you catch this fish and you bring everyone together and you're all just like eating a meal that you you know that you went out and caught and it's just like this very rewarding and tasteful meal mm -hmm. and just, you know, the good camaraderie. camaraderie too. Yeah. yeah. Very good camaraderie between George and Joe's family and, you know, yeah. having our videographer Javier there. It was just a good time, good people. And like, we knocked, we knocked out a lot of content on the first day. Yeah. So we had just such a good time putting together a beautiful video Yeah. and that never happens. You know, you're typically always grinding it out over you know a day or two sometimes even multiple days just to put something together really nice mm -hmm. and it happened and it was a lot of fun and it's a trip I'll, I'll i'll remember for the rest of my life it was really cool it really was so that leads us to number three stephanie's favorite again camping crossing to the dry <laughs> tortuga in a small boat okay okay so i'm gonna let you talk okay. but let's just start off by saying this was literally a day after the Miami boat. Yeah, show. so we are like, you know, we're exhausted. We, we met a lot of you guys and interacted. And, you know, if you guys ever want to meet us in person, you know, sometimes you guys reach out to us. Like, Count hey, on the Miami us? boat show yeah, this year. Count on the boat shows. Like that's when we're available. It's really hard for us to kind of drop what we're doing midweek when we're, you know, we working, we're working and we have things, we have obligations we have to meet and yeah. meetings and so forth, you guys understand. So it's really hard for us to kind of take the time to go out of our way to meet someone. But we set up these, you know, interactions like the boat shows, the nautical flea market here in the Keys. Just plan your trips around that. And that way, you know, if you really want to meet us, we'll be there. Mm -hmm. and. We'd give you whatever time that you want. We love interacting with everyone. But I will say at the end of the boat shows, I'm really tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we spent two days with Pathfinder yes. just representing them, meeting you guys. Yes. And Stephanie was exhausted. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty tired too, but we I was came, I was ready to get to the Tortugas, man. We came home that night. Like mm -hmm. what Started time? packing the boat. It was, liter it's, it was really late at night we got back because we finished the boat show. So we probably got home, went to eat, got home like 9 p.m., started packing the boat. Went to the grocery Gro store. Went to the grocery the store. Yeah, I got all the food. I remember even like last minute going and buying like gas cans in a tent and everything because we couldn't find certain things oh, all yeah. the way up until we drove down to Key West. Yeah. So we we're scrambling to do so much in the heat of the moment. Yeah, that we got there at night. It got really tight and yeah. stressful. But once again, I felt bad and I let Stephanie sleep in. 
and we ended up getting there in the dark. See, I tried to tell Stephanie, hey, let's wake up earlier so we can get there at a decent time. <laughs> and she likes her sleep. So unfortunately, sometimes we have to do things in uncomfortable <laughs> situations, but no, it is what it is because we did it and it was really cool. But it was, we it got was. to Key West. We got to Key West and we went over to the dry tortugas. We got there late. And we just had like a great like experience getting there. We had a group of fans and um, yeah, were, a whole bunch of kids that yeah. greeted us. They're like, "Are you life by the bow? Yeah, like, are you guys <laughs> life by the bow?" And they're so excited to see us. And we hung out with them and their yeah. parents, which was awesome. It was, and they're also great chefs. Like they came over and gave yeah, us they gave us some food. It was awesome. Oh, so good. Um, you could tell everything. They made their chimichurri. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I mean, that was a great one. I actually really enjoyed it. I was, you know, I was a little weary about staying on the island, mm -hmm. I would say, because that was our first experience actually staying on the island. We showed up in the dark. Yeah. And, you know, before the kids showed up, there was just these people working on the restoration of yes. the dry tortugas. Because all the little docks were destroyed in the hurricane. Yeah. yeah. And they had been working all day, so yeah. they weren't really the friendliest. And we started asking them questions and stuff like that. Like, hey, do you guys know where we could park or what's going on? And they everybody just kind of told us, we were, just work here. We don't know. Yeah, but then no. like some of them were kind of like ignoring us. So we're like, man, this is kind of like an uncomfortable situation. Like, we don't know who these people are. Like, you know, it doesn't really seem like anybody's here. Like, what's the situation? What's going on? But yeah. eventually we got off the boat, got everything unpacked. We're dead tired and exhausted and a little nervous at this point from driving over there in the night, or in night, at nighttime, excuse me. But, you know, it, it, it all just kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, camping. Sun starts coming up, the colors in the tortugas start to emerge, and it's just a beautiful experience being there. Mm -hmm. And then we went out fishing, and like we were talking about earlier, we caught nothing but groupers when they were out of season, and you know, so cool being over there in the bay boat. And this is something that I'd been wanting to do for a little while because, you know, big boats are great, but they're basically only good for two things, far runs and bad weather. Other than that, I would rather be in a small boat all day long because there's so much more that you can go or like there's so much more you can do and you can go places in a smaller boat mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't go in a big boat. So it allowed us to have a whole new perspective on the dry tortugas. Yeah. And that's what I think was so cool about that trip. Yeah. But it was also like beautiful weather. Mm -hmm. That's why we, you know, picked up and went. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it made the run that much more like enjoyable. Because mm -hmm. if you have bad weather, no matter what boat you're in. It just, it's yeah, rough. Yeah, rough is rough. Yeah. And I'm not trying to shove Pathfinder down anybody's throat, but that boat is probably one of the coolest boats that we've owned so far. It has a big boat feel yeah. with small boat capabilities, which yeah. is so cool. Yeah, absolutely. That's the best way to put it, but let's go in. We'll get back to talking about it. Yeah, we're one. about to get back to it. <laughs> So let's go to number two, which is the 300 mile Bahama boat trip chasing the world's prized fish. This trip, man, this was an incredible fishing trip. That was actually our first yellowfin tuna trip of the year, but it made it above the second trip just because a lot of great things about this trip. Yeah. I'll let you, I'll let you go first. Yeah. So the first thing I loved about it, it was like, you know, we, we went over and we were with Mark, with his dad, my father. Mark is a family friend yes. that we've had growing up my entire life. Yeah, one of my dad's my dad's good friends. So it was just so much fun to like go and I think last year he didn't come on our trip. He went the very first time that you went yellowfin tuna fishing. Mm -hmm. So this was my first experience. You know, like hanging out with everyone, like and their friends, and it was great. So like we went over and you know the fishing was just incredible. It started off slow. We were I know we were running around for a while and we couldn't find them. Yeah. And then we found like towards the end of the day, we found birds mm -hmm. and we stopped and I'm just like he wanted to move. He wanted to move and I go no no no, no. again wow. And what do you know? We all just start hooking up and it's incredible fishing frenzy. It's just like. 
one of those things that it's not only like, it's not a one person like troll catch fish. It's like everyone is on the boat enjoying this experience. Yeah. It is just the mo it's my favorite type of fishing if you can't tell in the video especially my screaming the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so much fun we had a great time everyone caught one and you know we just we really enjoyed ourselves and we did we we had so much fun like watching you know it was funny because I, I i remember mark like he kept having such a hard time on the rod <laughs> that he had. Yeah. And like, he's like, Stephanie, that's huge, that tuna. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think it's so funny hearing Stephanie's perspective, excuse me, because it's so different from my perspective, but I love it, you know? Like, she has such an enjoyable perspective and such a great perspective on all of it. And I do too, but I think it's funny when she tells the story, like there's so much that I'm just thinking of behind behind the scenes in my head that yeah, he, just doesn't necessarily make it into the story. Like two days prior to the trip, I was so nervous because the year prior, the trip just did not go that well. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just trying to think of ways to be more prepared, be better prepared. So I, I caught bait for two days straight the day before. And they all, all died. All day long. No, they didn't die actually. No, that they was, didn't. That oh. was years ago. Oh, okay. But I'm I put curious. them all at a friend's house, Danny, and um, I just wanted to make sure that the morning that we went, I had some type of security in, in bait. Yeah. And so after those two days, I was dead tired catching bait all day. And then on the end of like day two, I started preparing the boat, fueling it, putting all the ice in it, making sure we had everything we need, our paperwork. And I knew where the bait was because I began catching it two days prior. And um, it's funny, the morning of, I went back to that same bait spot and we just cast netted all the bait. Yeah. We didn't even use the bait that I had pinned up. But and, usually that doesn't happen. Yeah, usually it doesn't happen. And we just smacked every single live well full of bait in this boat. Yeah. Like, we could not have fit any more bait in the boat. And I thought it was cool because that's the reason why I built this boat um, a little different than our previous boat was specifically for this trip. Yeah. So being able to put your ideas into action and everything just working out in your favor was, was very rewarding. Um, but of course the weather forecast never works out the way that you want it to. No. And it was really, really rough. It was yeah. ridiculously rough. But I will say for Clay, he feels it throughout the entire day because he's up. I'm on my feet. On his feet. Whereas like I, if it's rough, I always can sneak away to the back and sit in a bean bag and relax. Mm -hmm. And like- That's what I was saying, it's funny, the two different yeah, perspectives. Yeah, it is very different for the both of us, which I, that's why I appreciate like, you know, him always just driving the boat and doing all of that because he, some days he suffers. <laughs> <laughs> some days I come back and my so back I and my knees and my ankles, everything is hurting when it's that rough. But it's all part of it, right, yeah. you know? And we did what we needed to do. We sat on the beach there in Bimini. We made lunch and then we made our crossing over into the tuna grounds, which was ridiculously rough. And I felt so bad too, because like I was looking at my dad and I was looking at Mark and I was kind of just like looking at everybody and you could just tell that nobody was having a good time. And there was one point my dad even said, he was just like, this sucks. And it's not what you want to hear. Like, because you know, the, the weather was bad. Yeah, and I was like, man, I want people to be having a good time. Like, I don't want them to, to suffer throughout all of this. And, you know, that started to weigh down on me a little bit. And then I just started to think to myself, it's like, man, all the stars align, but we can't find these fish. In addition to it being rough, we've been looking around all day for the birds. The birds follow the tuna school. So you find the birds, you find the tuna. And... We're moving, we're moving, we're moving, and we just, we couldn't find them. And then finally about like, you know, four or five o'clock, there was like an hour or two but left of sunlight. The weather, the weather calmed down. The weather calmed down. Yeah. And that gave us a little more freedom to move yeah. a little quicker in the boat. Yeah. And then we found this flock of birds and there was a boat fishing it. And I didn't want to get too close to the boat because I wanted to be respectful, but then he left. I don't know what happened with him. But I was like, whatever, like, regardless if he left, like, I was kind of like, eh, because Stephanie wanted to stay. And I was like, well, this boat left. So 
I don't want to stay because obviously yeah. he's not having any luck. Yeah. But Stephanie was like, stay, just trust me, stay. So we stayed. And like I said, we had so much bait. I was just like, screw it, man. We just started unloading the live, live wells. wells. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, there's just, when all hope failed, like when you just, nothing was going as you planned, it all just started happening like that. Yeah. And it all happened within about two hours. The yellow fins just start airing out next to the boat. We got quads, doubles, triples. I mean, we were just racking these yellow fin tunas in the boat. And it was just cool seeing everybody's reactions yeah. change and hearing Mark screaming from how big the tunas were and like, oh my God. yeah, <laughs> you know, these, it, it's not too often I do get my dad on the boat, but whenever I do, it's very special and it's yeah. very important to me. Whenever I can get my family on the boat or just spend time with my family, period, um, it's automatically a good time. And it was just crazy because it was such a roller coaster. Nothing was working out as I'd planned. And that's really what life is about, man. You just got to look at those, look at the, the positives. And if you just stay focused on the positives, they can always outweigh all the negative to get you to where you want to be and accomplish what you want to accomplish. And that video told a story like that, which I think was cool. So I think with what you're saying, like it's, it's just a really good transition into number one. Yeah. All right, so number one, our favorite video. And oh. it wasn't even a question, like we both <laughs> said it was like such a cool video, was our 109, nine, 190 miles. Was a high, I can't even speak, was our 190 miles in See, a small boat. See, that's how scarred she is from, from she can't Florida even talk. From Florida to Chubb, K Bahamas. Let me tell you, this trip, there's a lot that didn't make it into the cut. First things first, I have to say though, before anything, yeah. I don't know if they'll ever see this, but huge thank you to Angel and Francesca. Yes. We wouldn't have done this trip if we didn't come prepared. If we did not have another boat with us for the very reason things go wrong in a split of a second, and if things go wrong, you gotta have a boat to jump ship to. Mm -hmm. You gotta have like tools like an EPIRB, a satellite phone. You come with all these these tools in order to get over there and make these, you know, sketchy long journeys in a smaller boat. Mm -hmm. But what a lot of you don't know is back in the day, this was very normal for people to do. Like they didn't have these large center consoles to travel over to the Bahamas. So, you know, one engine boats were just like what that's you did. That's all you had. That's yeah. all you had. That's that's what you did. And you went over there. There's people who crossed jet skis over to the Bahamas mm -hmm. and you just go with a lot of people so in case things go wrong you have you know some you know you're you're safer in numbers mm -hmm. so basically this entire trip was like Clay asked me and I was like the only way I'll do it if we, if we have another boat a big boat though not another small boat and we you know, call, Clay called Angel and Angel was like right up. He's like, yeah, yeah. let's do it. Angel and Francesca, they're they are such good friends. Yeah. That's just one thing I want to I wanna say. You know, not only do I want to appreciate you guys, but yeah. I want to appreciate all the good people behind the scenes that make certain things like this happen sometimes. Yeah. So, you know. They decided like, hey, we'll go. We'll go. No yeah. questions asked. They were just No like, questions asked. We all booked our trip. We went, we started um, making the journey. We're just like, first thing we're gonna do is head to Bimini, see how things go mm -hmm. from uh, to Bimini. It was a great from crossing. To Bimini was bumpy, it was, of course. Like, I don't think it was, it was beautiful. It was, it was a little bumpy. Towards the end, when we started getting closer to Bimini, it was, it was beautiful, but okay. it, it's always, that. whenever you're in a bay boat, a flat bottom boat, it's always a little bumpy, in my opinion. Okay, well. To me, it wasn't that bad because then once we got to Bimini, things were great, but then things got bad. Things got really bad. Really bad. From Bimini to Chubb. Like, so bad to the point we never even filmed it. And it yeah. was a pretty big part that I kind of wish I would have spent more time filming because being like an authority in the space. Like, I think we did film it, but. It, it just didn't make it. Oh yeah, that's right. Because she dropped one of the GoPros in the blue hole. That's yeah, why it so didn't make it. It didn't make it because I lost the camera. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. But anyway, it got really bad once we got to Bimini. The uh, weather picked up. It started storming, and me and Angel and Francesca Stephanie were all looking at each other. We're like, "Should we go?" 
And he's like, yeah, like it looks good. Well, the looks, storms passed. Yeah, the storms, had passed. storms had passed. So we're like, okay, that's fine. They're gone. We looked at the radars. Everything was good. And then they came back. And then they came back because mm-hmm. storms just come out of nowhere. And we were, there was a good, and from Bimini to, to Chubb, Chubb is, You're on the Bahama Bank. Yeah. Like at the very maximum, it's about 20 feet. Yeah. But trust me, when you're in 20 feet of water, things can still get really bad. And yeah. the worst part about being in the shallow water is the waves, the waves stack. Waves stack. Yeah. They don't spread out. So it's not like you're able to ride over the top and come mm-hmm. down. Literally, when waves are kind of like as long as your boat, like every single wave is like right to the chin. And it's just, it was very uncomfortable. I went to um, the back of the boat, got yeah. comfortable in the jump seat. And I just sat there and I was just watching, like Clay was behind the helm. And we were riding in the wake of Angel and, and Francesca's 35 contender. And they waited for us. Yes. I told them, I was like, guys, look, I don't expect you to go 10 miles an hour all the way to Chubb. Like, just go. You guys can go. And they were like, no. Like, we all came here together. We're, we're going to stick stay with together. you guys. And Angel and Francesca, they were burning so much fuel just by going as slow as they were going. Mm-hmm. And that's why I just, I'm really appreciative towards them because yeah. they stuck with us the entire way to make it possible for For us us in order to make it possible for you guys to see. And we stuck it out and eventually we got there. We were pretty beat up. We were, we were exhausted. Mm -hmm. I just remember I needed food and I needed sleep because I was just like, that was a rough ride. But once we got there though, I will say, it was incredible. Unbelievable, man. Was, I would do it again yeah. to be in a boat like that. In, the boating in the experience again. in a bay boat like in the Bahamas is just incredible. I mean, just the simplicity of just pulling up to a sandbar, dropping like the power poles, getting to ride like, you know, different areas that we wouldn't necessarily be able to navigate through in the contender because we went back in the contender and it was still a great time, mm-hmm. but we didn't have the We're same, limited. Yeah, we're, we're limited, limited on where on what we can we travel. Do. So, I mean, it was just overall like such a great experience taking the bay boat over there. Would I suggest mm-hmm. you guys do it? Absolutely not. I, I think that was a one and done for me to chub. I would do it again. I don't know if I would. That I was questionable. I would totally questionable. do it again. No, oh, well, if I we were to get a twenty-seven a Pathfinder, <laughs> hey, that's fine. But if we were to get a twenty-seven Pathfinder, I would definitely. Do yeah, it again. if we got a yeah, but that's a bigger boat now. It is a bigger boat, but still, so, it's still a bay boat. Yeah, and I like guess you're right. that's why hybrid boats have gotten so popular because there's nothing that you can't do out of them. I mean, they're capable of basically all things. They're they're bad at everything, but they're good at just a wait. No, am I saying that right? They're bad at they're everything. They're good at they're good at everything, but they're not good at one thing specifically. Like they can do a little bit of everything. So like, of course, there's certain things that you're going to sacrifice. But I would personally like to be able to do everything rather than do one thing yeah. very very great. We should um, just ship the boat there and just hang out. <laughs> but no. Let me know if we need a captain that wants to start running boats over to the Bahamas <laughs> for us for free. Right. But no, I mean, once we got there, I remember the first thing we did the next day, um, we went bone fishing. Something that would have never have been possible if we were in a center console. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to bring the boat there. And we accomplished that yeah. very quickly. And Dude. I don't know if you remember, you remember the Bahamian? That ran over the whole school of bonefish. Oh yeah, yeah. But Do you that, remember that? Yeah. So we're we're we've been we've been like looking for bonefish all day, find, basically. and we finally found some. And there was just a Bahamian coming through, and he just like went fast. He was like coming in our vicinity, and I'm like thinking to myself, if this guy comes close to us, he's, he's gonna, gonna spook, spook the, the fish. Bo- but he was taking like a decent angle, like near, but he wasn't going right into the school of fish. Yeah. And so, so like I was he, politely just trying to say like, hey, like move. try to try to go a different way, go a different way. So then he thought we were in trouble, so he tried to help us. What a nice And he guy. turned and came right on top of the school bonefish. Yeah. Fish. And then we're and just like, like, oh man. And we're, he's oh like, are you guys okay? Gosh. We're like, no, no, no. We're just trying to like tell you the bonefish are here. Da da da. He goes, oh, don't worry. And then, anyways, long story short, 
they didn't move and they were there. He and ran over the entire school of bonefish and they just sank to the bottom and as soon as he left, they just came right back to the top. Something that would never happen in the Keys, no, only in the Bahamas. Absolutely not. They just, they're just they just in schools everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we caught a few, released them and uh, went about our business. And do the Bahamians eat bonefish? That I don't know. I don't know either, but for us, we're just catch and release. I know some people use them as marlin bait. Do they? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so sad. They're just such a beautiful fish, and it's hard to actually catch one. And if you guys saw the year prior, we try, Clay tried to hook a bonefish in and Andros. Andros and I did hook one. Oh, you hooked one, but, but I was a rookie, and I got the fly line wrapped around the fly reel. Yeah, that's right. We'll so go back to Andros. That was his redemption this year. But we ended up, you know, just having overall like an incredible experience. And that is something that we're so happy we were able to capture for you guys. Mm -hmm. And then to make it all, <laughs> well, it is another thing. So we decided, let's go to the blue hole. So we're at the blue hole. We jump in, and this is why we had to do the part two. We jump in the blue hole. And you know, we're I just filming ourselves, we're filming having ourselves, a good old time. great time. And we actually had some friends from the Keys that were there at the same time. So yes. like, we're all having a great time. Like, yeah, a lot of good friends around. Good time. We're finishing off our video. And I just didn't think anything of it. Like we were literally just finishing the video. And I'm holding the GoPro. Mind you, we use these GoPros to film ourselves. Mm -hmm. And for throughout the entire video. So we lost a lot of footage because I jumped in the blue hole holding it and you know from just like all the impact of just hitting the water because you're jumping what would you say it's 20 feet 25 feet? yeah it's about a 20 foot jump down into the blue hole and, and the impact like basically it weighs down on everything so it's hard to keep a good grip yeah like you have to keep a very hard grip so then I I had a, a grip on it but not good enough and I let it sink and Clay and I spent the next mm -hmm. couple hours trying to Everyone, get back up. Everyone, everybody did. that was here from the Keys, or like yeah. I said, there was a whole group that was there at the same time. We all do dove down yeah. trying to find it. There was just no hope. Mm -hmm. We were throwing cast nets in the blue hole. Trying to find it, see if it would pull it up. But the thing is, we ended up researching afterwards. The thing is like 200. It's like 600 feet oh, deep. Oh, 600 feet. So from what I've heard, but yeah. basically there's like a, a roll off on the blue hole that's at about like probably 40 feet and then all of a sudden on the roll off it just goes straight down so all of us were diving to the roll off and it was the scariest thing in the world because you don't have visibility after like the first five feet and then it's just like straight green and then once you get on the bottom you had to get this close to the bottom and you had to like feel around to and, see it. Yeah, and you just couldn't find anything. So, we're like, just... we were just, like, doing it together when we dive. Mm -hmm. I was like, you can't go down there without me because if, God forbid, something happens, I don't, I can't see you. So I would literally hold on to his fin. Yeah. Like, just to, so I could, like, once we lose visibility, so we could stay down there reaching. But we had to keep our hands on each other so in case, you know, something happened. But that it was It got too spooky. sketchy, so it we just decided that it, it's not whatever. worth it. It's not whatever. worth the footage. So we just left. And then he gave us an excuse to come back. And mm -hmm. we had an incredible time on the way back. Yeah, and we came back and we shot a whole spear fishing video. And we um, had such a good time. We did. We had a really good time. And we showed the blue hole again. Yeah. Um, but, but this time it actually made made the cut. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> But that kind of like, that trip also, we came back and we found out some incredible news when we got back. We did from that Chub K video. Yeah, but we'll tell them. We'll tell them about that a little later. Let's okay. just let's talk about GMC a little bit and then okay. move on to that. Okay. GMC was in the top ten because it wasn't like an actual life by the bow shoot. It no, was a, it, was it was a GMC, GMC shoot. shoot. But it was one of the coolest experiences, and kudos to those people. I never knew what went into a production until we worked with GMC. Like, they had at least 200 people out there. There's a lot of a people. A lot of people just, like, working all, all, on all ends. You know, you've got, like, a truck of people just for audio and mm -hmm. all those things, and it really just makes you see, like, you know, the, the capacity at which everyone's working at. And, like, you know, you need something, there's someone for that. Yeah. What I thought was kind of cool though is after we did the commercial, people were like congratulating me and like saying, "Hey, like good job on that GMC commercial. Like you did an awesome job." And I'm like, "That's so cool that people actually thought that I 
I put that together. Yeah, but we did. He did not <laughs> put that no. together. I it, was strictly just an actor, which was yeah. really cool. So back up a little ways. Um, you know, if you could imagine doing what we do, we get thousands of emails and, you know, definitely a lot of good opportunities and then a lot of opportunities that you kind of know are scam. Um, so when GMC, <laughs> our dog Riley's <laughs> snoring right now. Riley, <laughs> Riley, wake She's up. She's knocked out. She's snoring right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at you. Let me go back to bed. But when GMC had reached out, um, I thought it was a scam. I didn't think it was real. So I just emailed back because something about it seemed legit. And they're like, hey, um, you know, we, we want you and your wife to be in a GMC commercial and uh, we want to use your boat and we want you to drive down or drive around one of our brand new trucks and we're going to put together some social media content for you guys at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is this is legit. Like, yeah. this is the real deal. So the next thing you know, we're having meetings with like 30 different people all at one time in Zoom meetings and we're signing contracts and getting insurances on the boat, like all this crazy legal stuff because like this is this is a multi-million dollar production. But on, on the first day, um, basically we pulled the boat. Or actually, no, we, we took them fishing. They allowed us to go fishing. Yeah. And then after that, we got done. We put the boat up on the trailer and then we towed it all the way up to Key Biscayne. And then basically... No, we went to Marathon first. Did we go to Marathon first? Yeah, we went You're to right. Isla we went to Marathon Yeah, first. we went to Marathon first. And they first. shut down the whole seven mile bridge. It's for us, yeah. Yeah. And then we see it on the thread on Facebook, like, what's going on? I it's see like, life what's by life the by the bow doing? doing a, yeah. And I'm like, oh God, people are probably so pissed <laughs> off that we're shutting down this bridge right now. Oh yeah, so they would shut it down in increments of like 10 minutes and then they'd let the traffic kind of flow through again. But, mm -hmm. you know, Something I do want to shed light on Clay, like, about is, like, you know, we don't have any actor, actress, like, experience at all. Like, everything is very natural and on the fly. Like, we don't plan scripts out. Like, that's just not what we do. So, you know, they did hand us, like, a scripts. scripts and stuff that we had to do. But then, you know, that's easy to read off and, and, and figure out. However, but then there was a point in time where they wanted him to do this walkthrough on, on the truck. On the truck. And they're like, you think you can do it? And literally, I was like, yeah, I can do it. I got GMC executives in front of yeah. me, like, and like I, 50 different production people all in front of me. And like, I'm in front of like so many important people. And I, I was so nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I could, I would have never been able to do it. And I'm just sitting there and I'm there with the producer and I'm just like watching him do it and I'm just like I know he can do it like I know that this is something he's good at he does it all the time like you know it's something he's familiar with like he can do it so they start rolling and he just like oh my gosh he did it all in one take he killed it I was so <laughs> proud of him that I'm like I had people come up to me wow he's amazing we paid actors in the past to do it and and experienced actors and they just they can't do it to like the ability he did so i was just like so proud of him and like you know i was just i was really excited about like the opportunity and like for everyone else to see what i see in clay was awesome well thank you it was <laughs> it was a really cool moment it, it was, was. And, and oh wait, I forgot to mention there was like at least two hundred people watching him in silence, like in the background of I don't all. Know if there was that many people, but there was there was a lot. You of don't people. think there was like two hundred people? At least, I think there was about a hundred. A hundred, maybe a hundred. To me, around there. To me, if there's like just five, to me it looks like ten because I'm <laughs> I'm petrified. And I may be the same way. It, it could have been less people, but there was a lot of people. There was a lot of people. I remember, but, but all in all, it took a total of like four days to shoot the commercial. You know, we did the seven mile bridge. We did card sound bridge. We did, um, the bridge and key Biscayne. Same thing there. It was so cool because when we were doing the takes on the uh, key Biscayne bridge, we had a group of cop cars in front of us. And then we had a group of cop cars behind us. So every single time we'd go from one side of the bridge to the other, the cop cars would race in front real quick and then they'd stop the light. They'd, they'd basically space out the traffic for us so we could get our take going across the bridge. Yeah. And we did that a couple different times and it was funny because it was like, 
we were almost in like this, the, we were on this mission and all like the cop cars were like protecting us. So that was really cool. And you know, the whole team of people, like everyone from the producers to the editors, mm. the uh, the videographers. The makeup to, artists, everyone. The makeup artists, like just, it was so cool because like, they're typically like used to dealing with very, um, I guess you could say experienced actors, like actors that you guys see in movies. And they treated us that way. Like, I was like, hey, like, can I go get a cup of coffee real quick? Like, where can I find coffee? And they get their little buzzer thing on. They're like, hey, uh, Clay needs a cup of coffee. No, talent, talent. Yeah, talent needs a cup of coffee. And I'm like, (laughs) guys, I could just go get it myself. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And they're like, no, 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 no. You stay put. We do everything for you. (laughs) That was so funny. I was just like, okay, like, if that's how things are around here. So it's like, you're at the top of the food chain and everybody just kind of like treats you like royalty. Which was crazy to me. I think at one point. We're not those type of people. And no, I think at one point, like, it was like the lunch break. I was helping the guys, like, trying to, like, break down their tent. And (laughs) somebody's like, stop, you can't do it. You're going to mess up your makeup, the clothing. And I was like, okay. Like, I was just trying to be help. But, you know, it is just one of those things that, like, it was a cool experience. An amazing experience. You know, we we hope to do, you know, maybe something like that in the future again. Mm Mm-hmm. But. And it was really cool to get Yamaha, Garmin, and Contender on national television because the commercial is still airing oh, yeah. till this day. And, and it'll air until next year, too. And so. I think it's so cool because I don't think there's anybody in the industry that's ever done something like that. And we're for, so honored that they yeah, even they chose us. us. They chose this. us. Yeah. And, you know, that's all thanks to you guys for really supporting is. us and giving us the ability to come, like be in front of these big corporate sponsors. Um, so definitely an amazing experience. And all together, I mean, just an amazing year. The brand has grown tremendously. We've grown tremendously. And Stephanie is growing, growing as we speak. Yes. So, you know, we've had a lot of people asking us if we're having a baby and we are pregnant and we're going to be bringing on a new mate to Life by the Bow <laughs> come April 2024. So in mm-hmm. a few months and we're just so so excited. And, you know, it's funny because we were like, let's hold off. Let's hold off to like announce it, this and that. People have been getting the little subtle hints that we've been dropping. But uh, yeah, we're super excited for it. Of course, nervous, but so Stephanie is currently five months pregnant yes. as we speak. Yes. So she has been gaffing tunas. <laughs> she's been gaffing mahi, swordfish. She's been offshore red snapper fishing. That's right. Um, marathon when we were down at Marlin Bay. She's been pregnant throughout the past five months of life by the bow. So, yeah. you know, everybody give this woman <laughs> some support right here. She's been sticking it out. You know, she's stayed motivated and committed towards you guys, towards everything that we've done. And, um, you know, that's just the human being that she is. And with all mm. that being said, um, it's a girl. We know yeah. that it's a girl. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. Like, I imagine, when I imagine being a dad, <laughs> I imagined, um, like, my first little mate. Somebody that's going to be just like me. And, you know, if you couldn't already tell, like, I imagined it being a boy. And when I figured out it was a girl, not that it was disappointing, it's just it didn't really meet what I had in my mind. And then just seeing Stephanie throughout these past five months of pregnancy, um, I just started to think to myself, there's probably some men that wouldn't even be able to do what she's doing right now. So the fact that, you know, it's our blood combined, um, being who I am and being who her mother is going to be. There's no doubt in my mind that this little girl is just going to be so much fun. Um, Not only for us, but for the world to watch, our families to get to know and grow with us. I mean, it's just, it's it's so exciting to, to, to think of 
who I she's going to be. I know. I'm so excited. I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, hormones. <laughs> but really, it's going to be just an incredible experience. And we're going to bring her to you guys. Of course, she's going to have to sit out with uh, grandmas. So we have both of our grandmas or our mothers <laughs> yeah. on deck, ready to like be, this is their first grandchild for both of them. Mm -hmm. And they're just so excited and they're just like, I'm like, I, I just want to continue being out, able to like do my life for right now. So, you Let's know. Let's not forget about grandpas either. Oh yeah, I mean, grandpas, there's, yeah. There's a lot of excitement there, there too. There's so much excitement on both ends, but they're just like ready to like, you know, take care of her when I want to go out and shoot. So we'll continue mm -hmm. everything that we're doing and um, she'll eventually join in on, on all the fun. Now I'm going to have two women giving me a run for my money rather than just one. <laughs> Not to mention our dog is a female and so is our cat. <laughs> He's got all this feminine energy around him. Yeah, for but real, man. Anyways, we're, you know, Dude, we're... Thr just <laughs> <laughs> she must like be... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she's, she's Dude, dreaming about. On, on you so I can film her? Uh, she's, You're a filmer so I can put this in the video. Uh, <laughs> she's having a doggy dream where she's running and she has her mouth, her teeth coming out. Oh, my God. I think she's calmed down now. I think we're waking her up a little. But anyways. Oh, that was hilarious. I wish you guys could have just seen what we just saw. Anyway. I don't know. Anything that you want to say? Well, honestly, this year wouldn't have been possible without you guys. And we really do appreciate all the support. And, you know, we appreciate all the continued support. You know, people who reach out to us just to tell us, you know, good things. Or they take the time to come meet us in person. You know, it, me it means a lot to us. And if you guys, you know, do want to get a chance to meet us in person, we did say the Nautical Flea Market. Mm -hmm. We'll have is, a link down in the video description yeah. with all the information that you need. Yeah. Um, you know, we have people that fly all around the United States just to come and see us for that for that, that event. Yeah. So, you know, don't feel like you have to be local to just come and see us. You for know, sure. come down to the Keys, book a charter, stay at a hotel, and then come and see us at the Nautical Flea Market yeah. at the same exact time. It'll be a Saturday and Sunday. So yeah. we'll have that there. And then we're also going to head over to the boat show. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And bear well, with me because I'll be, I'll be pretty yeah, big Yeah, she'll be pretty <laughs> pregnant at both events. But, yeah, yeah, Miami Boat Show, too. If you guys don't get a chance to come down to the Keys, um, we'll be at the Miami Boat Show. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just look forward to those events. Um, other than that, we are going to continue to produce and post content biweekly. Um you know, also appreciate the support mm -hmm. through our brand, Avail. Yeah. Um, if you need some last minute items for Christmas, you know, shipping is typically between two to four days. It can take longer mm -hmm. for complications. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, we're excited. We're appreciative. And um, life has been one heck of a really cool journey. And we're so thankful for our family and for you guys for just making so much of this possible. I don't know how to thank you guys enough. Seriously. And, you know, we hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas. Miss, yeah, happy Whatever Hanukkah. You believe in, yeah. yeah, happy new year, everything. And uh, we hope that this upcoming year is also everything you guys have been waiting for. Mm -hmm. All right. make, make it a great year. That's right. We'll see you guys in the next year. All right, guys. See you then. Bye.